Nahum chapter 3 and verse 1. Start in verse 1. It's still speaking about Babylon. Now he just told this woman, uncover your head, uncover your thigh, so your shame and your nakedness shall be shown. Right? Huh? Is it the uncovering of the thigh of the nakedness? The nakedness and the shame. It's both. The head, shame, thigh. I was the nakedness. I'm just speaking to the way it's written. Okay. Three and one. Three and one first. Nahum chapter three and verse one. Mm -hmm. Woe to the bloody city. Woe to the what? To the bloody city. Uh huh. It is all full of lies and robbery. Uh -huh. The prey departeth not. Mm -hmm. The noise of a whip mm -hmm. and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and of the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots. Come down to verse 4. Verse 4. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well favored harlot. Wait a minute. Because of the whoredoms of the well favored harlot. We know that. In Revelations, Babylon is that harlot that everybody drink from her cup, right? He says, this is a well-favored harlot, read. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, mm -hmm. the mistress of witchcraft mm -hmm. that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Behold, I am against you, mm -hmm. save Yahuwah of hosts. I will discover thy skirt upon thy face. Oh, love. Now, a harlot got a skirt on her face? What did this take us back to? Anybody know? Anybody know what this take us back to? Take us back to Tamar, right? We're going to get into that in a minute. Read. Behold, I am against you, saith Yahuwah of hosts. The crazy thing, he says, I'm going to take the skirt off your face. Which means what? He just told her in Isaiah 47, I'm going to cover your locks. Then he told her, I'm going to say, I got to pull this off. I got to, I got to pull the whole thing off. Right? Read. And I will discover the skirt upon thy face. Mm. And I will show the nations thy nakedness. Show, wait a minute. Just like what you was just saying. I, she, he just said, I'm going to take the skirt off your face and show your nakedness. So nakedness don't just deal with the thigh. What am I also deal with? Your yeah, head. Mine reads different. What y'all got? It says that she's going to pull her skirt over her face. Which is up and over. What, what's, what's that in? Um, Israel 98 um, version. Who? ISR 98. ISR 98. Hello, baby. Okay. Okay. No doubt. No doubt. And shall show nations your nakedness and range your shame. Okay. That's something that you'll say. No doubt. Read it again. Behold, I am against you, say of your will of hosts, mm -hmm. and will discover the skirts upon thy face. Okay. And I, I see the translation. translation. And I will show the nations thy nakedness, mm -hmm. and the kingdoms thy shame. Uh -huh. And I will cast abominable filth upon thee, uh -huh. and make thee vile, and will set thee as a gazing stock. And it shall come to pass, that all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee, yes, and sir. say, Nineveh, Babylon, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? Mm -hmm. When shall I seek comforts for thee? Okay, let's go to Isaiah chapter uh, 3 in verse 14. Let's see the comparison. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 14. Verse 15. Verse 15. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces mm -hmm. and grind the faces of the poor? Say of Yahuwah of hosts. Good. Moreover, Yahuwah saith, because the daughters of Zion. Because of who? 
Because the doors of Zion, just like the door of Babylon, the door of the Chaldees, is talking about the people. So we're giving you an example of a woman. Read. Are haughty. They are what? They are haughty. They are haughty in the world. And walk with stretched forth necks. Uh huh. And long time eyes. Uh huh. Walking and missing as they go. Oh, what you got in Proverbs 7 and 9? It says they walk with stretched forth necks and long time eyes. Walking and menacing as they go. Let's see what this talking about. Proverbs 7 and 9. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black. And dark night. Mm -hmm. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. With the what? With the attire of an harlot. We got to see what this attire of a harlot is. You keep on talking about it, right? And subtle of heart. Uh -huh. She is loud and stubborn. She what? She is loud and stubborn. Sound like a lot of our sisters in Israel, right? <laughs> loud and stubborn. Ready? Her feet abide not in her house. Her feet abide not in her house. So she going out and dealing with whoever she wants to. Read. Now is she without. Uh huh. Now in the streets and lie up and wait in every corner. Uh oh, that sounds like harder to me, right? She on the corner, right? Okay. Let's see something. Let's go to Genesis 38. Let's see something about this harlot's apparel. I actually looked into this concerning the harlot's apparel. We go, we go, when we, when we read what this is talking about, I just found it on Genesis 38 and, uh, pick it up at verse, start at verse 1 first. Genesis chapter 38. Matter of fact, verse 11. Genesis chapter 38 and verse 11. Then said Judas to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house, uh -huh. till Shalah, my son, be grown. But he said, Least her adventure, he died also, as his brother did. Uh -huh. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Uh -huh. And in the process of time, the daughter of Ashur, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up unto his his sheep shear to Timnah, and he and his friend Harah the Adulamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father in law drove up to Timnah to shear his sheep. Now, this was somebody that was messy. Because they tried to make her go and follow him where he at. When he told them to stay a widow at my house. Right, read? And she put off her widow's garment. Does anybody know what a widow's garment is? Have anybody seen a widow's garment? The what? The lace thing that go over your head. A black veil and a long black dress. Exactly. This is a widow's garment. So this is what she had on. She had on the veil over her head. You know with the black. You can, you can see through it, right? With the black garment. This was to let you know that this woman is a widow. She was widowed, right? Read. And she put her widow's garment off of her. Uh oh. She, she took off her widow's garment. And what else she do? And covered her with a veil. Uh huh. And wrapped herself. Now, they already had this veil with the widow's garment. But she covered herself with a different type of veil. We're going to see what it is. Go ahead. And sat in an open place. Uh huh. Which is by the way to Timnah. She put on a harness garment. When you look up what a harness garment is, she wore a tight fitting dress, something that showed her curves, right? Showed off her figure. So, just to, uh, just to point out to the women, you're not supposed to be wearing nothing to show your shape. That becomes appealing to a man. I've heard things like, oh, that's just in that man's heart. That's a lie. For what is skin through here butt naked, and a man turned to look, is he wrong? He's a man. It don't have to be that it's in his heart to lust. Y'all do get that, right? So this woman threw off her, her, her big dress and went and put on a tight fit one and showed her, her body shape. And a veil which covered her face to where you couldn't see nothing but her eyes. Read on. 
failed and wrapped herself mm -hmm. and sat in an open place, mm -hmm. which is by the way to Timnah, for she saw that Shalah was grown, mm -hmm. and she was now given unto him to wife. She was not given him unto him to wife. So he grown now. But she wasn't married. She like, wait, you told me you was gonna give me your son. I got something for you. Right? When she was sleeping for him, when Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot. He thought her to be a harlot because of what she was wearing. Right? Read. Because she had covered her face. Because she what? Because she had covered her face. Uh huh. And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto you. So hold up. He walk, he coming down the way. He see his harlot. He like, look. My wife just died. You know. You go ahead. Right? Now, if this woman had a veil that was see-through, wouldn't he have known it was his daughter-in-law? This woman had her face completely covered to where he couldn't see. Read. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. Uh -huh. And she said, What would thou give me? So what you going to give me? Just like a harlot was today. Two hundred dollars, my honey. All right? Y'all know. Three. <laughs> now, please come in unto me. If you go, you go get this. It's gonna cost you. Right? Three. And he says, "I will send thee a kid from the flock." And she said, "Will thou give me a pledge?" She like, "Hold up! You can't just tell me you're gonna send me something. I need, I need my stuff now. You gonna give me something to hold?" You know, when you go to a place and you get some of that stuff, you're like, I need an ID. So I don't get my stuff back, right? She's like, I need something to hold. The woman was Tamar, right? She played a harlot and she slept with who? Judah. Judah, right? Let's look at the similar two. Israel played a harlot, right? Who married her? Hamashiach, which was from the loins of who? Judah. Y'all see the similar two? Israel played the harlot. Hamashiach had to take on that harlot. Judah here saw his harlot and took her off. Right? So let's go back to Isaiah chapter 3. Even in this, y'all see this woman was covered, right? Even in all her harlots of apparel and everything. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse, please stop it up. All right, pick it up. Moreover, Yahuwah, Isaiah chapter 3 and 16. Moreover, Yahuwah said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with spreads forth next and walls on eyes, walking and missing as they go, mm -hmm. and making a tinkling with their feet. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Yahuwah will smite with the scab mm -hmm. the crown of the head. You know what? Will smite with the scab the crown of the head. He's going to smite Israel with the scab on the crown of her head. Read on. Of the daughters of Zion. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah will discover the seek, their secret parts. He's going to discover their what? Their secret parts. And he's going to lift up that skirt, right? Read. And that day, Yahuwah will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet. Uh -huh. And their calves and their round tires like the moon. Uh -huh. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers. Where did they get all this stuff from? Huh? From the pay? Anybody else? Where did he get this stuff from? Kevin? You sure? He just told you, I'm about to take this stuff away from you. Who did they get it from? Let's go back to Ezekiel 16. Got it from the Eves, right? Nope. <laughs> Who said that? 
What you say? Say it again. Ezekiel 16 and 8. Anytime you come and you see a woman polluted in her blood, you clean her up. What you gonna do to this woman? She yours, huh? What you gonna do to her? You gonna her. Right? Read. Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee, mm -hmm. and I covered thy nakedness. Mm -hmm. Yea, I swear unto you, and entered into a covenant with you, say of your whole power, mm -hmm. and thou became this mine. Mm -hmm. Then washed I thee with water, yea, I thoroughly washed away the blood from thee, mm -hmm. and I anointed thee with oil. I clothed thee. I what? I clothed thee. I clothed you. Also with broidered works. With broidered works. I gave you a. a the, your garments was out cold, right? Read. And shod thee with basil skin. Uh huh. And gird thee about with fine linen. I, guess I put fine linen on you. Right? Read. And I covered thee with silk. Uh huh. I decked thee also with ornaments. Mm. There you go. I decked you with ornaments. And I put bracelets upon thy neck. I gave you bracelets. And a chain on thy neck. Gave you a chain. And I put a jewel on thy forehead. Put a jewel on your forehead, which we see. This go back to what he did with Aaron and Exodus. With the turban or the meter they had on their head, it was a gold plate that he put his name in the middle of it. Read on. And the earrings in thine ears. I gave you earrings. And a beautiful crown upon thine head. Who knows what the earrings symbolize? Ownership. Possession. I gave you an earring, right? This means you were supposed to stay with me. Read. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment of fine linen. I laced you up. You had it all. Read. And silk and broidered work, mm -hmm. and thou didst be fine flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful. Oh my goodness. And thou didst prosper into a kingdom. You prospered into a kingdom. So this is talking about the nation of Israel, right? But giving you a similar to of a woman. Read. And thou renowned went forth among the heathens for thy beauty. For it was perfect through my kindliness, which I had put upon thee. But then you went a whore, right? So let's go back to Numbers chapter 5, right? Because we still got to finish this out. This man sent her before the priest. The priest took her before the most high. Showing her shame. Showing her nakedness. Right? He uncovered her hair. What's up? Just wanted to point out that list didn't cover hair. Got you. Got you. Got you. Go ahead, man. <laughs> Numbers chapter 5 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall take condensed water in an open vessel, and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put it into the water. And the priest shall set the woman before Yahuwah mm -hmm. and uncover the woman's head. Why would he do this? Shame. Go ahead. And put the offering of a memorial in her hand. Mm -hmm which is the jealousy offering. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causeth the curse. Mm -hmm. That causeth the what? Causeth the curse. What the children of Israel cursed? Something like that? Mm -hmm. And Deuteronomy 28, we got cursed or something? Oh, okay. Go ahead. And the priest shall charge her by an oath and say unto the woman, If no man have lain with thee, if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free from this bitter water that causeth the curse. So was we answered? No. We wasn't, right? Read. But if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband, if thou be defiled, and some man have lain with thee beside thine husband, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing, mm -hmm. and the priest shall say unto the woman, Yahuwah make thee a curse mm -hmm. and an oath among thy people. Uh -huh. When Yahuwah do make 
thine thine to rock. Make your what? Make your thine to rock. Wouldn't that be a reason for him uncovering her thigh? Showing her nakedness. He said, I'm going to make your thigh rock. Read. And thy belly to swell. And make your belly to swell. Read. And Hold on to that. Your thigh to rock. Your belly to swell. Read. And this water that causeth the curse shall go into thy bowels uh -huh. and make thy belly to swell. It's going to make your belly swell. Read. And thy thighs to rock. Uh -huh. And the woman shall say, So be it, so be it. It is what it is. Ain't nothing she can do about it. Read. And the priest shall write these curses in a book. He shall do what? He shall write these curses in a book. Ain't Deuteronomy a book? Ain't chapter 28 a list of curses? Ain't Leviticus a book? Ain't chapter 26 a, 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 a list of curses? He said, write them in a book. Who are you talking about? Israel. Right? Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 3. So we can connect some dots. For my eye. Because he took a head covering off this woman's head. Now, we know that we got, uh, we committed this uh, adultery, right? We committed this adultery. We got found out. So this is him taking his stuff back. Just like any man in the world would, like we spoke about before. I done gave you this, your credit cards, your this, your that. I want all of it back. You can't keep nothing. You bring in what you, let, what you brought in. You take out what you brought in. Right? That's a man, right? I mean, it show you what it is. What do you do that? I gave you that mink coat. I want that back. That engagement ring, you don't need that. Because you might pawn it. I need all that. I need everything back. This is what this is the hurt that we did to the most high. He said, I covered you when you was in your blood. You gonna go and do that? I'll date you all. Now I gotta take the stuff I gave to you. I gotta take it back. Let's see everything that he took. Let's see if you can find your head cover. Go ahead. Verse 17. Uh, Isaiah 3 and 17. Therefore, Yahuwah will smite with the scab, the crown of the head mm -hmm. of the daughters of Zion. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah will discover their secret parts. Mm -hmm. And that day, Yahuwah will take away the bravery of their teeth and ornaments about their feet and their claws and their round tires like the moon. There go, your, there go uh, your earrings. The chain. The what? The chains. The chain he gave. And the bracelets. The bracelets he gave. And the mufflers. Now, just because it wasn't mentioned in 16, don't mean he didn't give it. He gave you an overview. Feel me? Go ahead. The bonnet. The what? The bonnet. He gonna take from you the what? The bonnet. What is a bonnet? Wait a minute. He gonna take it? So we're speculating that he gave it? Huh? We're not speculating. He says, I'm going to take the body, right? What do you take the body from? You take the body from off the head. Read. The bodies and the ornaments of the legs. Of the what? The uh, ornaments of the legs. I'm going to show you the similar to it. Go ahead. And the headband. I'm taking something else off your head? And the tablets. Uh-huh. And the earrings. And the earrings. The rings. And the nose you uh -huh. the changeable suits of apparel. Who had changeable suits of apparel? He's breaking us down as a nation right now. Who had changeable suits of apparel in Israel? Priests and wills. Kings. Right? I'm going to take that stuff away. You shall be no, be no more priest to me, right? Read. And the mantle. Uh -huh. The mantle. Was a garment that covers you. Read. And the wimple. Uh -huh. And the crispy pins. What else? The glasses. And the, and the fine linen. Uh -huh. And the hood. Where do the hood go? Yeah. Read. And the veil. Where do the veil go? He took all this stuff back. Because he's trying to do something. Read. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. I ain't pouring no oil on your head. Nor giving frankincense, right? Ain't that what he told us in number five? Read. And instead of a girdle, a rent. Instead of a what? Instead of a girdle, a rent. Where does a girdle go? 
When did he tell you the curse would be for cheating on your husband? Thousand thousand rock, rock, and, the rock, and your stomach gonna swell. A girl keep you fit, right? Instead of that, give me that. I need that. Read. And it's so come to pass that instead of sweet smell, that shall be stink. Uh -huh. and instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of what? And instead of well set hair, because your hair was grown. Baldness. What happened? Baldness. Now, if a woman is bald, what's she ought to be? Shame. And if she's shame, what she got to do? Cover. She got to cover. Read on. And instead of a stomach, of, a girding of sackcloth. And a what? And burning instead of beauty. Read. Thy men shall fall by the sword, Go ahead. and the mighty in the war, and her gates shall lament and mourn. And she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. Same thing he told Babylon to do. Sit down on the ground. I'm going to uncover your locks. I'm going to lift up your skirt over your head with the correct translation, right? I'm going to show your nakedness. I'm going to show your shame. Right here, the Most High was showing the shame and the nakedness of Israel in front of everybody. Y'all see that? In Ezekiel 16, one more time. Matter of fact, don't get Ezekiel 16. Get Jeremiah, the 13th chapter. Jeremiah 13. <clears throat> Get verse 22 first. Jeremiah 13 and 22. Verse 20. Verse 20. Verse 19. Can't be, matter of fact, verse 18. Like my say, you got to be 18 for you as 19, right? Verse 18. Jeremiah 13 and 18. <clears throat> Say unto the king and to the queen, humble yourselves, sit down. Do what? Sit down. Read. For your principality shall come down. Even the crown of your glory. Where does the crown go? He said, I got to take this stuff. You got you to gotta sit down. You ain't being who I, who I made you to be. Sit down on the ground and humble yourself and let everybody see your shame. That's why we're in captivity now. Because our shame was shown. Our nakedness was shown and they jumped at it. The other nations know our book better than we do. Why are we in captivity? They know this. Oh, the most high he did this to them. Let me go ahead and grab a couple of them. Right? Read. The cities of the south shall be shut up, uh -huh. and none shall open them. Uh -huh. Judah shall be carried away captive of all of it. Uh -huh. It shall be wholly carried away captive. Read. Lift up your eyes, and behold them that come from the north. Where is the flock that was given thee? Thy beautiful flock. Mm -hmm. What would thou say when he shall punish thee? What you going to say when he punish you? What could we say? We couldn't say nothing. Same thing with that woman sitting before the Most High. Same thing with that woman that was Babylon sitting. You couldn't say nothing when he punished you. Read. For thou hast taught them to be captains and as chiefs over thee. So not sorrow take thee as a woman of travail. Mm. Read. And if thou say in thine heart, Wherefore come these things upon me? For the greatness of thine iniquity, uh -huh. for the greatness of thine iniquity, your what? Are thy skirts discovered? Your what? Your skirts discovered. Is that plural? Do it say skirts in your book? It's verse 22. It says skirts. How many skirts are you going to have on? It means more than one, right? And your skirts are discovery. And thy heels made bare. Uh huh. Because everybody like walking around with heels on, right? <laughs> Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Or the leopard his spots? Can, you change? Can the Ethiopian change what he looks like? Or a leopard change he got spots? No. You know what I mean? You can't change what's what about to happen to you or what happened to you. 
then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. So now this is what's going to make you do good. When I show your shame and your nakedness, it's going to force you to come back to me. Is he requesting? This is going to make you do good. Read. Therefore will I scatter them as the stubble that passeth away by the wind of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. This is thy lot. The portion of thy measure from me, saith Yahuwah, because thou hast forgotten me and trusted in falsehood. Verse 26. Therefore will I discover thy skirts upon thy face, uh -huh. that thy shame may appear. Mm -hmm. I have seen thy adulteries, I've seen your adulteries. and thy Nines uh -huh. and loot is of thy whoredoms uh -huh. and thine abominations on the hills in the fields. So I say what? Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem, wilt thou not be made clean? When shall it once be? This was to Jerusalem. I got to show you shame in your nakedness. I got to uncover you. I got to uncover your nakedness. Right? So when we see Paul tell it, oh, let's go back. 1 Corinthians 11. So when we see Paul saying what he's saying, did this come from out of nowhere? Yes? No? No. He said this for a reason. If you look through Corinthians, Paul was going at the women because they were doing things they weren't supposed to. They were trying to teach. They were trying to lead. They were trying to do, so he had to correct them. Let's get verse 5 again. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 5. But every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonored her head. Uh -huh. So this is even all one as if she was shaven. Wasn't the children of Israel shaven? Didn't he make baldness upon their head? Read. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. If you ain't covered, you're shorn. Read. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven. If it's a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, which it is, all the time, then what? Let her be covered. Let her be covered. Read on. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Uh -huh. For as much as he is the image and the esteem of the Most High, but the woman is the esteem of the man. So now when we look at Moses, Moses had to cover the glory of the Most High, right? But when he went back to the Most High, he uncovered his face. Right? Read. For the man is not of the woman, but the, but the woman of the man. Uh -huh. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Read on. For this cause. Ought the woman to have power on her head uh -oh. because of the Malachim or angels. Uh oh. Nevertheless, uh -huh. neither is the man without the woman, uh -huh. neither the woman without the man uh -huh. is in your womb. Mm -hmm. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things of the Most High, judging yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray to the Most High uncovered? Is it comely that a woman pray to the Most High uncovered? No. Read. Do not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? What does it take us to? What does it take us to? A man being shamed for having long hair. Samson. Because we end up happens to his hair. Oh, we. Right, read. Do not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Mm -hmm. But if a woman have long hair, it is the esteem to her. Uh -huh. For her hair is given her for a covering. Wait a minute. This is where the controversy comes in. Like we spoke about her. A woman's hair is for her covering, right? So he just said, as long as you bald head, yeah, you got to cover. But if you got some left, girl, you good. Who's I just said no? Right? Read. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such customs. 
neither the churches of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not that ye come together, not for the better, but for the worse. Mm -hmm. For first of all, when ye come together in the assembly, uh -huh. I hear that there be divisions among you. It's divisions. always going to be divisions, right? But we got, when we come here, now we went through this book just to show you, that, like my wife, for example. Everywhere she goes, she comes. Head to toe, right? That's my household, though. Right? Matter of fact, give me First Thessalonians 5 and 17. I'm going to show you why. Not only just because of what the book say, I'm going to give you an example of what happened when she wasn't covered. Seventeen. First Thessalonians five and seventeen. Mm -hmm. Pray without ceasing. Wait a minute. Pray and prophesy, right? Read. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of the Most High in the Messiah concerning you. Hold up. So to pray without ceasing is the will of the Most High and the Messiah given to you. I didn't say he prayed without ceasing. He said it. Right? When you pray in the prophecy, what you supposed to be doing? Right? According to what we believe, right? You're supposed to be coming, right? Pray without what? Without ceasing. Read. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of the Most High and the Messiah concerning you. Verse 19. Verse 19. Quench not the spirit and despise what? Despise not Prophesying. Go ahead. Prove all things. And hold fast. Hold fast that which is good. Verse 22. Verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. I bring you here to say this. Diamond, I'm sorry, I got to bless you out. Before we were dealing with, I got to, because she an example. Before we were dealing with. A woman covering her head all the time and being out in public covering her head. You know what I'm saying? It would it was I wanted her to, but didn't really have no book to back it, right? So it was like eh, 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 right. One day we went to a restaurant and Muslims were serving in the restaurant, right? Now, mind you, before this, Diamond and Mariah worked out with the in, in their community, right? Diamond said to me one day, every time I see them, they always cover, and we don't be covered. I'm like, hmm. Right? So we sit in the restaurant in Dearborn, and uh, one of the ladies came over and says, uh, you know, uh, she gets asked the questions about who we are. I had on fringes, she had diamond had on fringes, she had a shirt on, this stuff. Uh, you know, what do you guys believe in? All of these different things, right? We like, we Hebrews, you know what I'm saying? We Israelites, it comes to the Bible. Like, oh, okay, I know, I know, I know that. But, um, ain't you supposed to have your head covered? Do you know that took the life out of me? So imagine how she felt. You know what I'm saying? For somebody of a different race, religion, quote unquote, to come and say, ain't you supposed to have your head covered if you're a Hebrew? Wait a minute, what? Be blamed. You ain't so, nobody even supposed to have nothing to say about you like that. That's on the real. Again, what you do at your own home, after looking at these streets, that's on y'all. Y'all feel what I'm saying? But when we come here together, this is how we supposed to be. Y'all got me. We supposed to be covered. Give me um uh uh uh, uh Philippians chapter three, verse fifteen. We close on this. Huh? I didn't say I was cut to the heart. <laughs> Diane, what you say? She couldn't say nothing. <laughs> yeah, you right. Yeah. Yeah. She couldn't say nothing. And I know the feeling that I had inside of me was cold. I know she was cut down. You know what I'm saying? 3 and 15. Matter of fact, hold on, let me get there. Let's see. Start a little earlier. Let me close on this. Um, start at verse uh, 13. Philippians 3 and 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, 
But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Uh -huh. I press toward the mark. I do what? I press toward the mark. You can only press toward the mark doing those things which he wanted you to do. You can only press toward the mark following after the example, the good example of your forefathers. Read. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. And this prize that we supposed to get ain't attained easy. This ain't no light thing just because you know you Israel. You know what I'm saying? This ain't nothing you can just be like, all right, man, you know, I got that. No, you got to work. It's a race. You got to work. I told y'all before, my coach always told me, hey, when you playing basketball, you trying to be the best you can be, the time you sleeping, somebody else out there working. You know what I'm saying? This ain't, no, this ain't nothing we can just take light. This ain't nothing. The smallest things in relationships cause relationships to fold. So if this might be a light matter to you concerning this head covering, concerning these the, the, your, your clothes that you're supposed to wear, you better check and see if it's a light matter to you Read on. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of the Most High in the uh -huh. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect. As many as be who? Perfect. If you ain't trying to be perfect, this word ain't for you anyway. If you ain't trying to be blameless or complete, this ain't for you anyway. Read on. But thus minded, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, uh -huh. the Most High shall reveal even this unto you. Read on. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rules. When we ain't here, let us walk by the same rules. Y'all got me? When we come together under this roof, whether it be a building with a let us walk under the same rules. Read on. Let us mind the same thing. Let's have, let us have the same type of mindset. You got me? So, it's not only a, a scriptural thing, but it's a respect factor. You feel me? So when we are here together, let's be together. Right? Men handle yourselves like you're supposed to. Women handle yourselves like you're supposed to. And let's do this thing together. Right? If somebody walk in your house and you like take them shoes off and they don't take them shoes off, you gonna walk on my carpet I just got clean, what they got to do? You got to go. Big Bob ain't play that. So we supposed to here in the house of the most high? In the presence of God? Absolutely not. So with that, I say shalom.